Hello, it's Nick back again, and I know I'm crap at making videos these days and I carry on promising the earth and giving you a handful of dirt, but that's just the way things are for me at the moment, because I'm doing an awful lot of work and I've got other commitments in my life as well, very active in the church, very active in Toastmasters, and I've got a few other things going on too, as well as maintaining, um, you know, quality of life on a regular basis, so don't worry about that, that's, that's just me going through, that's just me moaning, okay? So the very first thing you've heard when, when you clicked on this video was me moaning and I have a quick moan at YouTube as well because now they're like removing monetization from, from some of my old videos because they're too controversial for the advertisers so basically the only thing that they're really going to like want to put ad, you know advertising on will be videos about really 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 boring things for incredibly boring dull people which uh, kind of like makes the rest of us who are not part of the norm uh, a little bit on the upset side because like my views are moving further and further towards the point of view that it's like the alternative cultures that have got like certain quantities of truth which the rest of the world really needs to start taking on board if you think about the history of my channel a lot of it has been about experimental occultism experimental spiritualism through things such as meditation um, practicing and, and playing with uh, the astral projection experience idiom idiomotor effects or with both the talking board as well as the pendulum uh, and little things like that because there's some importance there uh, in more recent years since that time a few years back when I did when I did my course in nutrition uh, I've been reading even more about all the various forms of alternative health and trying to work out if these things work in what ways do they work and also doing a few experiments on myself and on my own health some of which I've already two of things of which I've already told you about but you know what else is next uh, I don't have quite the bravery I'm gonna be honest with you to do let's say the full like you know two week water fast and followed by three months worth of juice fasting and all that kind of stuff I don't quite have that in me but the more I've been thinking about that and the more I've been thinking about what I've learned from reading about things like the Gerson therapy and uh, the interpretation of raw vegan healing from various different schools of thought that there must be some kind of truth to that so again I'm again you know, you know, it, it's just coming to my attention that it's the alternative schools of thought which are probably right in lots of different ways but this is where we got to get the, the the intellectual and understanding balance right not in every possible way because just because, because you like had one really really amazing strange experience it doesn't mean to say that you can like unbalance the whole universe you're burning it like a yellow candle on a, on a Tuesday or something that's something I've, I've repeated before in my older videos and it's still something that, that I think if, if you if you got something going here if, if, if there's something which is happening it's an indication of something we will remain as a species in a state of lack of knowledge lack of total understanding and clarity as to what all of these things refer to, connect to, and mean. There may be a way of life that one could do that would be able to incorporate a sufficient quantity of aspects from all of these schools of thought and to be able to maintain normal life. I don't know what that is yet. I mean, when I've, uh, I mean, I mean, last January, I had a full, full-blown colonic irrigation. That was interesting. Why was that interesting for me? Because out of the body came matted, whole linseeds, and I hadn't had linseeds for a long time. So these seeds, because I'd taken them whole into the body, had stayed whole and had made a um, solid concrete, and that's why I needed to have the colonic irrigation. And that, that was curious. I mean, after all that stuff had gone, there were still other forms of, like, solid black tar, which came out through things like enemas and colonic irrigation after that. And once I'd had a full-blown professional colonic irrigation, there were people who didn't know I'd had it, who reported that my skin looked amazingly clear and my eyes were amazingly bright and I looked amazingly healthy. So there's this, like, weird thing that people laugh at because it involves some professional shoving a tube up your backside and spending two hours washing you out with about 16 gallons of warm filtered water at about 38 degrees Celsius. 
and therefore you know there's there's a certain quantity of scatological humor to it i mean we, we can agree to that anyone can agree to that but on the other hand it is something that has an effect and it dramatically improved the way i looked now if it's improving the way in which my skin looks you know on my, on my face as a result of washing out downstairs then does that also suggest that you know when you remove all like the tar and the debris from the inside of the colon the the body can then dump any extra poisons and toxins down there and therefore drain it away from like your eyes your skin your circulation your, your internal organs yes i think it would make a lot of sense to be able to say that that would be a a, a thing you have a reason to believe y y yeah to what extent does that have an effect upon overall health and recovery from disease i don't know yet is it true for the, the, what the, the, it said within uh, the writings in, of the Gerson therapy by Charlotte Gerson that toxicity, as well as deficiency, are the things that create common diseases, or, or most diseases, things like cancer, or heart disease, and all kinds of stuff, liver disease. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. But if it's true that things like the Gerson therapy, which is bloody expensive to do, if you've had a look at the Gerson therapy, if, if you've like worked out how much it would cost, all right, for all of your organic produce, and all of the time it takes to do all of the juicing, and of course to buy the right kind of juicer, you know, it, it's quite a big cost. So you've got to be well off. You've got to have time. You got to be, you know, because in an ideal world, you want to have all your juices fresh. That would, you know, it would make a lot of sense that it could potentially have that that quality of um, life-transforming effect. Uh, within the raw vegan interpretation, a lot of the juices are made with cucumber. Why cucumber? It's meant to have an effect upon digestive system parasites. Does it? Personal experience implies that that's very highly likely very highly likely so these are these are two like healing modalities which have importance to them the other healing modality would be the colonic irrigation that has some truth to it the the experiences i've had with which were, you know, partially recreational and partially out of curiosity, and also it, it became part of my job as well. All the, like the psychic experience stuff has some truth to it, but it's not a hundred percent reliable. Not because, like, you know, human skill is reliable. The skill you need to get into a certain state of mind that's not a hundred percent reliable, and it's very difficult. You know, if it takes you two years to have your first astral projection experience, I mean, it's not necessarily something you can just suddenly switch on and switch off, despite what the sci-fi channel and the horror channel tend to make you think. Because like, when people say that, like, they believe in all this stuff, the normal people out there think, oh, yes, yeah, so you believe all that stuff on the horror channel and sci-fi channel, to which the answer is, of course, no, that's a movie, okay? That is fiction. And this is where it gets complex, because within all of those groups, all the, you know, I mean, I mean, you see it in religious groups, don't you, right? The full stuff. You see people who um, sell the idea that they are 100%, you know, pure, perfect, and right, so they have the one and only answer. It's very simple, okay? But you get that in all the supernatural cultures, too which is wrong. You get that in all the health cultures too. So you find someone who would say that there is only one diet or there is only one approach or this, that and the other and all these people who are like going religious about the 80-10-10 diet when there's some like incorrect assumptions within 80-10-10 thinking. Maybe it's something that a person could do for a while if they've got a particular specific health problem they need to deal with but maybe there's other things you need to do for other issues. You know? question of learning what particular thing is right for you at the time 
and where you are personally. And of course, someone else will then like criticize you because humans themselves enjoy the whole one-upmanship thing and the whole status and power thing, and which, which is stupid, sick, immature, pathetic, wrong, undesirable. But it's part of part of the human experience to be in the company of these people, and that that's an innate danger. So you've kind of like got to get your life back through thinking for yourself um, and working out your own particular route for your own, you know, need for experience and your own need for uh, health development. I mean, obviously what I've learned as a result of doing uh, some very basic uh, parasite cleansing has taught me that some things that the medical profession says isn't true actually is true. So that leads me to ask questions as to what else is true, but the medical world is not telling us is true. Uh, and, but thinking like that without going to the extremes of, you know, you know kind of like conspiracy theory paranoia, like, oh, they're all out to get us and all that kind of stuff, because they're not. They're trying the best they can with what, with what they know and with what positivistic science has shown them. But whereas there's other things which their uh, approach can't quite tackle, but may yet still be important. So, as a result of that, you know, the journey of the individual can't be following either any one specific guru or one specific teacher or whatever, or indeed one particular school of thought, or indeed just one particular school of, of health thought, or indeed spiritual thought. Uh, it can be grounded in a particular place, you know, so to speak. Uh, paganism, Christianity, uh, raw vegan healing, um, juice fasting or whatever, and then use that as a foundation to follow all the rest of your exploration and see where your journey takes you. Because I don't think that anything is a specific path. Instead, you've got lots of different journeys. Each one of them has a self-developmental component to them. Each one of them has a medical uh, health development component to it. And developments in terms of your ideas and your thoughts and who you are as a person. But it does remain self-evident to me that there's some things that the scientific world doesn't accept, but which is objectively true if you are bright enough and brave enough to dedicate enough time and energy uh, to research, to learn, and to experiment, to test that which is true. All right? And then to work out like uh, how to implement that in your life in a way which is uh, meaningful, beneficial, worthwhile, and wholesome. I'm not like saying we have to be skeptical of science, but it's kind of like running two streams of thought in parallel. <laughs> On one side of things, accepting natural science. On the other side of things, being skeptical of some things that is said by the natural science world and the medical world, and being skeptical of some things which, which is said by uh, basically any group, and doing a bit more exploration, and seeing in what ways there's some truth here and some truth there, and how can we therefore get to the, the best goal we can within the limitations of our life. Uh, mentally, emotionally, intellectually, spiritually, and in all these ways. So that, you know, we can just get the best from life. Does that make sense? Pops up. Speak to you soon.